Hello everyone. How are you people of God? I pray that you all are putting, putting your trust in the love of God who loves you. And so I wanted to come on and encourage you all again with another powerful word that is going to help keep you standing strong. And so thank you all so much for joining me wonderful people of God and thank you all so much for your prayers and your support and coming on joining with me each and every day it is such a blessing to me and I thank you all for all that you do and all your support in the work of God may the Lord continue increasing you prospering you and blessing you and keep you standing firm you are going to see that spouse of yours come out. Many of you all that are standing in the gap for the salvation of your loved one. And that marriage shall be an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. It doesn't matter if there has been a divorce. God loves you and wants you to trust in his love. And know that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask, think, or hope for according to that power that's at work in you. Having faith in God is all you need, precious standards, to overcome anything, any obstacle. For with faith and with God, all things are possible. And you know, it's His love that we trust in Him. It's His love and His grace if God didn't spare his only begotten son for us, as the word tells us in Romans chapter 8, won't he give us everything else? Isn't it his will that we have life and we be blessed and everything we do glorify him? God loved us and gave his son up for us while we were sinners. While we, while we were in the midst of our sins, the Bible tells us. As they were hanging him on the cross, he prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. He loved all the way to the end, all the way up to his death. He never stopped loving. It was his love that caused him to give his life for us. So that's the same love God wants us to trust in. As his word tells us in 1 John chapter 4, the Bible tells us in verse 16, John the apostle wrote something so powerful. He said, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. And that's the key. When your trust is in God's love, it casts, it casts out all fear. There is no fear of judgment and there is no fear that, oh, God is not going to help me and God doesn't care about what's going on in my life and, and God is not hearing me and I'm just stuck. When you know God loves you, you will know. That he will never leave you nor forsake you. For God is love. He is love. The Bible tells us. For God is love. And all who live in love. Live in God. And God lives in them. And so this allows us to see that anyone who claims to have God in their life will also reflect that same love and be merciful and intercede and walk in that compassion they will reflect the same characteristics as God they will remain in that love and so we who have God in us will not give up on our loved ones and our family because God who is in us the one who loves as the word tells us love never gives up love is faithful love 
never fails. And so God will never fail you. He cares about you, people of God. As the word tells us to cast our cares upon him, for he cares for us. And I love what John also wrote in the fifth chapter, verse 11. He says, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This is why he gave his son up for us. So that we can have life and have it more abundantly. And also live the life of Christ in every area of our life. Our marriage, God blessed it so that it can illustrate Christ. That perfect love where a man loves his wife as his own body as Christ loves the church. And a wife who is filled with that same love, honor and reverence her husband God gave up Christ so that we can have all of his benefits he wanted us to walk in that perfect love of liberty that perfect love of grace that love that gives its life for another lays down its life for another and so of course it's God's will for our marriage to be healed and be as Christ. Not that we'll never make mistakes. Yes, we're going to constantly grow in that love. But that is the end result of what he planned for us. That is what he has given us. That marriage to bring forth his glory. He wanted our lives to reflect him. In fact, the Bible says... He said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Talking about him and his son. And so Jesus gave up his life so that we could receive his spirit in us. That he promised he would send back to be with us and to lead us into all truth. Meaning, walk in his way. Walk in his righteousness. And overcome sin and evil and wickedness. This is why we see things going on now in marriages and then he goes on and says in first john chapter 5 verses 13 through 15 i have written to you who believe in the name of the son of god so that you may know you have eternal life you have eternal life people of god and then he says and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him and since we know he hears us, when we ask, or when we make our requests, we also know that he would give us what we ask for. Because God is love. We serve a given father who gave his only begotten son that not one would perish but have everlasting life. And so just think, and that spouse of yours, that loved one of yours, that you are standing in the gap for. God wants them to receive Jesus Christ. As their Lord and Savior. For he wants all to come to the knowledge of truth. And as John wrote these precious words. Saying that we can ask of anything that pleases God. And he will give us what we ask. And what, what pleases him. What pleases him? The Bible tells us so clearly about what pleases God. And again, it's coming from 1 Timothy. The Bible tells us, I'm going to turn there real quick again. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. What pleases God is when we ask God. To help those that are lost and intercede on their behalf and pray and give thanks for them. The Bible tells us to pray this way for all people so that there can be godliness, so that there can, can be righteousness. And so, with you praying on the behalf of your spouse, praying for them to come to the Lord praying that they will have life because God gave his son so that they could have life 
The Bible tells us in verse 3, this is good and pleases God. Our Savior, the one who came to save. Paul is telling us this. And in verse 4, who wants everyone, including that spouse of yours, to be saved and to understand the truth. You can go on their behalf to God and God will save them through you. This is what pleases God because God has called us as priests and intercessors. Who else can intercede on the behalf of your spouse except you? Who else can pray on the behalf of your children except you? No one else would, will, ever, will ever be able to pray like you. That one that is near and dear to your heart, that's the only way they're going to come out. Once they come to the knowledge of truth. When they come to the knowledge of truth, Paul says, then in verse 10 of Colossians chapter 1, they will live a life that will always honor and please the Lord and live a life that produces every kind of good fruit. And we know what the fruit is. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5 about the fruits of the Spirit. See, the, this is what pleases the Lord. I'm going to turn there. Galatians chapter 5. The Bible tells us the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in verse 22 in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control there is no law against these things this is god's will that's why this is what god wants in our lives this is what pleases him and then we could see things turn around in our lives so it's going to take praying for wisdom spiritual wisdom and understanding this is what's going to bring pleasure to god the bible tells us when a man is joined to his wife this is this is what comes from god this is what god has made it is a great mystery it is something god created that none of us understood and knew about until god revealed it to us by his spirit through his word but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one when a man is joined to his wife and love his wife as his own body and his wife is submitted unto her husband this is reflecting Christ and the church united into one and so the enemy is fighting against what God has blessed us with but he is with us people of God and will answer that prayer he has already heard that prayer God wants you to believe you've received it and so it is God's will that we ask of these things hallelujah as Paul says so again I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband this is what pleases God for God says he will judge all those that live a life of sin and adultery, not honoring their marriage. My God. And so, yes, we ought to pray. And if God was able to join the Jews and the Gentiles and make them one, the Bible says, in his body when he was hung up on the cross, who broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us. He surely is able to do it in that marriage. He surely is able to make you one. Because we see this is what he said. As I say, as the scriptures say, a man shall leave father and mother and be joined unto his wife. All this is happening because of what Christ did. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. And he united the Jews and the Gentiles into one people. When in his body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. 
And God is breaking down that spirit of wickedness, that hindrance, that hostility, that enmity, whatever has come in to separate what God has joined together. Christ has come to bring peace. Christ has destroyed it in his body. Believe on him, people of God. Trust in his love. Receive it. Hallelujah. And claim these promises. If God done it between the Jews and the Gentiles, he certainly is out to do it between a man and his wife. Because that marriage is called to illustrate Christ and the church united into one. God doesn't want to see it no other way. Hallelujah. And Jesus is saying in Mark 11, verse 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. This is how breakthroughs come. Hearing the word, hearing what God says about your life and believe in him to do it. Taking it and believe that it is yours, that it is already done. As John also says, we can pray for anything. And God hears us. And we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that he would give us whatsoever we ask. This is the confidence we have in God. Those who have eternal life. Those whose trust is in his love. This is what gives you that confidence. Because God is love. God wants all to come to the knowledge of truth. He's heard that prayer. Thank him for it every day. Give Thanks on the behalf of that spouse of yours that God has brought out. And I said as though it is already done. That God has brought out. Because God hears the prayers of the righteous. God wants all to come to the knowledge of truth. And he surely wants that spouse of yours joined. One with you and you all be like minded towards one another. And receive one another as Christ received us. For the glory of God as the Bible tells us. That we are called to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ Jesus. This is what a husband and his wife is called to do. God wants that marriage to reflect Christ. He don't want it. He does not want it no other way. And so believe you received it. Call your marriage blessed. Call your marriage healed and restored. Because it is. That's what it was created for. To be as Christ. That's what it was created for. To be whole and to reflect Christ. And the church united into one flesh. It is already so. It is done through the blood of Jesus. Who has reconciled all things. And restored all things the Bible tells us. To himself. In Colossians 1.20. There is restoration and healing in that marriage. People of God. He wants you to receive it. Receive it in your heart. That seed. And that's when. That's when that harvest. Is coming forth. Get ready for what is coming your way. Hallelujah. We call it done. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord God. That it is your will. That all would come to the knowledge of truth. And that our spouse. Oh God will walk in spiritual wisdom. And knowledge and understanding. And live a life that is pleasing. And fruitful unto you. You have called us all to be fruitful and multiply, to walk in that love, to walk in that goodness and that joy and patience and meekness and temperance. And be faithful to one another and practice self-control. Thank you, Lord God. We receive it in our lives. We take it, Lord God, now. Bless you, O oh God. Thank you that our spouses, O oh God, are coming home. Thank you for restoration and salvation in their lives. For it is your will that not one would perish. Thank you, Lord God. We give our spouse to you, Lord. We praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. We lay our loved ones on the altar. Lord God, let your will be done in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for saving them. Thank you for setting them free. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, and as a result of it, our marriage will illustrate Christ and the church united into one. For you are making us one. You are doing a mighty work in our lives. Thank you for this miracle in our household. Thank you for healing. We bind the works of the devil and the curse. We cast it out 
in the name of Jesus for we are the blessed people of God. And all of us who agree give you the praise and we say amen. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for delivering us from all evil, Father God. We praise your holy name. And Father, I give you the praise and thank you for everyone that has also sown to support this ministry and keeping the word of God coming forth each and every day to lift up those that are heavy laden and to bring encouragement. Oh God to those that are needing hope and needing a word oh god thank you for each and every one may you bless the works of their hands thank you for all of their support oh god and lord god i just praise you for it all in jesus name thank you that the best is yet to come to each and every standard whose faith and trust is in you and trust in your love amen amen and amen get ready people of god he loves you god cannot lie he is for you and your home he's calling you already out he has called you out of darkness he has blessed you through the blood of jesus he has healed and restored the years the locusts and the canker worms the caterpillars and the poma worms has eaten your marriage is healed. The Lord is saying, trust in him. Receive it and declare it every day. Hallelujah. And thank him for what he has done for you. This is what he's asking for. God loves you, people of God. And I love you too. And until next time, bye-bye.